blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When I became a Christian over two decades ago, the first thing I was taught was the humility that was in Christ. How humble. Jesus is and how humble he was. And many people began to quote to me the conduct of Christ and they taught me scriptures like 
If they slap you on the left, turn your right ears. Christianity is a thing that must humble the man practicing it. I heard that. If someone come to you and ask you to loan him money for business, give him all you have. And if you go and ask him for the money and he slap you, just give thanks. But then I began to search the scripture. I found three places where Jesus was not too humble. Listen carefully. Battalions of soldiers came. And when they met him in the Garden of Gethsemane, listen carefully, he said one word bigger than any atomic bomb ever used. Whom seek ye? The Bible said, as soon as they said, Jesus, he said, this is me. When he said, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus. And he responded, here am I. My Bible said, they all fell their faces to the ground. So Jesus was not stupid or an idiot. But the difference between me is so big. If I were the one soldiers came with touches and cutlasses and gone to kill me, and I say, here am I, and all fell, I'm going to march on the head of everybody. I will begin to sing choruses. My enemies are defeated. Conquered my enemies. I will say, look at you. You came to capture me and now you're on the floor. I will begin to curse and to beat them. But Jesus made a statement. He said, let these men go first. In any danger... You stand God's protection. You. The enemy, though a thousand on your right and ten thousand on your left, they shall not destroy you. According to Psalm 91. Then I read another place where Jesus went to the church. He was not the archbishop of the church. He was not the parish reverend father. And he was not the bishop of the diocese. But when he got to the church and he met them messing up with the church, they were not reading the Bible. They were not preaching the gospel. They were not teaching. They were not healing. He was angry. He met them selling and buying. He took one of the goats that was chained, loosed it, took the rope, and dealt mercilessly with the pastors and the elders. That day he was not too humble. He beat all of them, and they began to jump through the window. When they escaped, the Bible says he brought in the blind, the deaf, the dumb. And all who were sick, he formed a new church. He prayed, they were healed, and he said, My father's house shall be called the house of prayer, not the house of selling and buying. That day Jesus was not too humble. All the day. 
the king of the city sent for him and said, Jesus, I'm told that you perform miracles. Come to my palace and perform one. Like many of you who hear that Christians sell food, you rush there every day to eat free. You say, the Lord sent me to eat free. If God is going to send you to go and eat in a place free, he has to tell the person to send for you, not you going by yourself. But when the king said, tell Jesus to come to my palace and perform miracles, Jesus said, tell that fox to shut up. That day he was not too humble. To call the king fox, F-O-X, fox, Jesus knew that the king that day was a fox. So he called him his proper name. Then the third time, Peter, the always outspoken man, Peter always said the wrong thing at the wrong time. Every time he would say the right thing at the wrong time. He was always talking, 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 no planning. Pa, 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 pa. Peter, ta, ta, Peter, ta, 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 Peter. So Jesus said, I will soon die. The third day I will rise again. And when I rise up, I will have poured out my blood for redemption of mankind. Then everyone that come and believe in the work of redemption I'm doing at the cross of Calvary shall be redeemed forever. By the shed blood and by the water and by confession of our sins, humanity can be saved. But I'm going to die first. Peter said, Lord, be it far from you. Then the Bible said, and he began to rebuke the Lord. And Jesus turned to him and said, Peter, get you behind me, Satan. In these three occasions, the church selling and buying, Peter rebuking him and telling him not to die, the king sending for him, to come and perform miracle for concert's sake. You know, if it were me, until I read that place, until I became a real Christian, if it were me that the king called to the palace, I know many pastors here, if Queen Elizabeth sent for them and said, come and perform miracle, they would count it an honor. They don't mind even listening whether it, they are called for disgrace, they will go. But since I read that place that Jesus told the king to shut up fox, I will not go. So, the Jesus I want to talk to about today, and the church that I want to preach about today, wherever you are hearing me, the church I want to talk about is the church with responsibility and dignity. The church is no more a place of mediocrity. A place of abuse. A place of inferiority and a place of disgrace. The church is no more a place of who are you. The church is a temple where God is worshipped in spirit and in truth, and the people that go to church, according to the scripture, are supposed to become responsible people. If the church cannot transform you to greater responsibility and productivity and action and life and power, then the church is not doing this. You became a Christian. There's no difference in you. Since you became a Christian, your darkness has not turned to death. There's no regeneration 
and transformation. If the new birth did change you from what you were to what God wants you to be, then you are not born again yet. Because Christianity is not a thing of shaking. Are you a Christian? Oh, yes. How do you know? I shake when I go to the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. I feel it. Like, Christianity is not a thing you feel. And I love that chorus you sing, but it's more than that. Christianity is birth. B I R T H. To give birth to new life. Feeling can come and go, Christianity comes and stays. Transformation comes. And when you are born again, you don't take sign, look for a little plank or an iron rod and write. I am a Christian. I am a Christian. No. The things you do, the words you say, and how you live shows that you are a Christian. Are you hearing me? If you hear me, let me hear you say amen. amen. So, I want to read a very big challenging thing concerning what God wants to do with your life now that you are how many of you are Christians if you are if you are really a Christian stand up if you are a Christian raise your hands up Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Come, I like to have picture with Christian. Come here, come to my back. Come here, yes. I love that. I've seen some Christians here with cigarettes in their hands. Oh, yes. God knew you couldn't hide that. If you are a Christian, raise your two hands up. It's good. It doesn't matter. That's how to start. You will stop it later. Heavenly Father, thank you. I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray that the words we are about to hear will remain in our lives indelible. Words of truth. Words of power. Words of deliverance. Words of miracle. Words of new birth. Now we tell us that Jesus has become King of kings and Lord of lords in our lives. The words that will change us, tune us on, tune us upward, lift us up, make us men and women of God in action, preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The message that will no more make us to become defeated, that will no more make us to live in darkness and live in dark hour. The message that is going to bring our men and women who once were in darkness, but now come to light. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that everyone that hear me today shall have a change of heart. I pray in Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jeremiah, chapter 51. You will know why now I said the things I first mentioned. Jeremiah 51, verse 20. The word of the Lord. First of all, in verse, 5, in verse 1 of chapter 51, the Bible says, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them, that rise up against me, a destroying wind. When God speaks, we are supposed to listen. When I was born again, over two decades ago, 
in the city that I received Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, which is my city. Idolatry was the order of the day. And some few years ago, my city was called the city of blood. Human lives were used for sacrifice. But God spoke to me. God said, now that you have found me as your Lord and Savior, I, God, am going to use you to abolish, to exterminate, to vanquish the power of bloodshed, the power of witchcraft, the power of wizardry, the power of sacrifice, the power of idolatry, the power of evil, the power of darkness. I, God, will use you to cancel it. I heard loudly. I heard distinctly. I heard clearly. I heard very, very positively. I heard God say to me, God told me, because I raise you up, darkness will no more in your nation prevail. Because I raise you up, the power of evil shall no more increase, but righteousness shall increase in my time. God told me that. Then God woke me up one night and said to me, Thou, Jeremiah 51, 20, Thou art my battle axe. Thou art my battle axe. And weapons of war. God is a fighter. God is a warrior. God is a destroyer of evil. And God told me, you want call the call I gave you. The call I have brought you into is not going to be the one when you come to church in the morning, you say, Mary, Mother of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh God, our help in ages past, him one. Holy, 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 stand up, stand up for Jesus, the soldiers of the crown. God said to me, no, prepare for battle, prepare for battle, prepare for battle, prepare for battle. Battle against sin, battle against witchcraft, battle against death, battle against disease, battle against sickness, battle against blindness, battle against ignorance, battle against things that are wrong in government, in society, battle, 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 fight. You have become my battle axe. The Lord told me you are not just to come like any other preacher. The Lord told me don't be like any other preacher. You must be willing to lay down your life and I will pick it up for you. You must be willing to believe that with me, all things are possible. The Lord told me, no evil shall be ever. No man, he gave me promise in Joshua 1, verse 5 to 8. No power shall be able to stand you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. With thee, God said, you must sharpen the battle axe. 
and you become my weapons of war. Australians, Christians, the time of religion has passed. The time of playing church, the time of playing church has passed. The time of gambling has passed. The time of playing has passed. Let's get ready to fight with God. Let's get ready to be used by God. Let's get ready to rise up against sin. You are my battle axe. God did not say, you are my piece of stick. God did not say, I'm serious. God did not say, you are the hoover for the devil to use to clean the carpet. God did not say, you are the dustbin that the devil will heap iniquity upon. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. you have been saved so that you can sing him one, him two, him three. You thought you were saved so that you can put 
$2 offerings in your offering bag. You told you we are saved so that you can say, it is more than that to be born again. When you are born again, your life changes. When you are born again, your language changes. When you are born again, the fire of God will burn in your bones. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. God asked me to tell you, Australian Christians and believers anywhere in the world, from America, from England, from Africa, from Australia, West God, Father Dean, my brothers, from anywhere you come from, from Italy, from Germany, from India, God says, thou art, thou art, thou art my battle axe. Somebody say amen. amen. God says, with you, I will break down nations that rebel against me. Kingdom that say, who is God? God says, with you, I will break them to pieces. No compromise. No mortgaging of conscience. No selling of your life to the devil. Thou art my battle axe. Sharpen your life to cut down iniquity. Sharpen your life to pull down kingdoms. Sharpen your life to destroy nations that reject God. Make your life available. The next move of the church is no more the move of jacking. It's no more the move of only singing in the spirit and shouting and prophesying. The next move is battle move. How many can say amen? amen. How many of you are ready to fight with God? How many of you are on the lost side? Oh, you think when you become a Christian? Take it easy. Oh, yes. Don't be rude. Oh, yes. Don't speak against anybody. Oh, yes. Don't talk about money. Oh, yes. Don't talk of offering. Oh, yes. No! I said no! No! God said, and with thee, I will break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee, I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee, also, I will break in pieces man and woman who rise against the voice of God. With thee, I will break in pieces old and young systems, old system, new system, organizational church without God. God says the newborn believers, the fire flame believers, the men with message of truth and life and Holy Ghost, with thee I will break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. Verse 23, I will also break in pieces with thee, the shepherd and his flock, the pastor that holds you in prison. Some of you have become prisoners in your church. Pastors lose the sheep of God. Pastors set the captive free. Pastors let them serve God. Pastors, let them release. Set the prisoners in your church free. If the pastor refuses to set you free, 
set yourself free. Set yourself free. If the pastor refuses to lose you, be loose and go. Jesus is still in the losing business. He said, go and bring that axe. Whereon no man ever sat, the axe was there. The axe was the royal axe. The owner only knew how to chain the axe. He didn't know how to use it. So Jesus said, that is a valuable thing. Go bring him to me. I will ride on it. Many of your lives are chained in your different dead, dogmatic, ecclesiastical, orderless church of no faith and no life. Get out! I said, get out! Get out of prison. Be loose from it. If your pastor is dead, remember, dead hen cannot hatch fresh eggs. <laughs> Should I go on? Australians, British, American, African, Fijians, if the Son of God shall make you free, you are free indeed. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day! It's a new day! It's a new day! God is going to do something! God is going to do something! God is going to do something! With your life, you are no more going to be tissues and toilet rolls in the hands of the devil. The devil will no more flush you out of toilet. You are going to become the city of God. I want to pray for all who are sick right now. Before I finish my message. All who are sick, get up. If you are sick, stand up. And I want this recorded. Someone with deaf ear, come out. You receive your healing now. Someone with neck pain, come out and be healed. Someone with neck pain, come out. God is going to do something. With me, God is going to break to pieces every sickness in your body. Climb up. 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 Who are going to help me catch them? When sickness get out, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, in five seconds, sickness is going to go away. Pain will go away. When I, I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of Christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. 
We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Of the neck come here all of you with neck pain put your hands and tell me when you are healed you will know it did you hear me put that lady down I'm going to pray for her on the floor put her down I'm going to pray for her there God started something in her life yesterday in her soul there's a worm let me do what God asked me to do. You with neck pain, put your hands. I curse. Yes. Yes. Healing is coming to you. Now, your body has been touched by a warmth of the spirit. Now, I reach my hand to you. Every touch of stiffness in your neck, be loose and be healed in Jesus' name. Be loose and be healed in Jesus' name. Now your neck is healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to remove your hand, shake your neck, two of you, shake it, turn it, twist it, is healed in Jesus' name, is healed, is healed in the name of Jesus Christ. It is healed. You are free in Jesus' name. Amen. You are loose in Jesus' name. Be free. Come here. Shake it like duck. Properly, like duck. Shake it again. Over. Jump up. Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. Amen. Go. Amen. In Jesus' name. Rise and be healed. Come here. Come here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed. Be healed. Be set free. Go in peace. You are healed in Jesus' name. Now run down the aisle. Run down. Run. Run. Yes, start to run. Go. Go back. Amen. Go. You are set free. I trouble, I trouble, all of you with eye problem, deafness, come closer, deaf ears, come closer, blind eyes, come closer, in Jesus' name, I rebuke sickness, come out, in Jesus' name, come out, be healed, in Jesus' name, be loose, in the name of Jesus. Every foul blending spirit, come out. Receive your sight. What's your trouble? Deaf ears. 
you foul, deaf spirit, I curse you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom I serve, whose I am, here in Jesus' name, here in Jesus' name, be healed. Go heal in the name of Jesus. You are healed. Are you ready to be healed? I have no time for fun. Are you ready to be healed? Raise your hand. What do you want to be healed from? Eyes. Take your glasses off. In Jesus' name. You blindness spirit. You foul demon of blindness. Come out of her. Let her go. Heal. In Jesus' name. Eye trouble. Ear trouble. I speak to you. Here. In Jesus' name. Here. In Jesus' name. It's loose. Turn your back to me. Say what I say. Jesus. Jesus. I'm healed. Jesus. I'm free. Jesus. I can hear. Now. I hear. I hear. Now. I can hear. I can hear. Go. Place, place your hands in where you have your sickness. You will hear, you are hearing, you are hearing. Pick these things up, they were your own. Your ears are open, and now you can hear. Tell them your name. What's your name? Alan. Alan. Born deaf. Now you can hear. Born deaf. Now he can hear. Born deaf. Now he can hear. Hallelujah, Alan. Hallelujah. Oh, la 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 ba mama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Born deaf. Heal. Mother is crying. Born deaf. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank God. Who did it? Jesus. Who did it? Jesus. Who did it? Jesus. Alan, go free. Go and begin to use your ears. Give God a hand, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Put your hands. Put your hands in your head, in your eyes, in your mouth, in your neck, wherever you have problem. When I stretch my hand to you, if the Holy Ghost flat you down, you are down. But you get up, Heal. Put your hand there. Come, I want to lay hand on you. Come, I want to lay hand on you. Shola Mahaba, Porobo Sikalaba, Maya Baha, Poromaha, Pikayala, Yimbala Bahaba, Sorobo, Yekila Mama, Injiba Mahaya Moho. Come out and enter no more. Be healed in the name of Jesus. There's a power going through your body now. It's taking you down. Go. In Jesus' name, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Put your hand there. Whatever happened to you is between you and the Holy Ghost. Anywhere. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Headache. Earache. Neck, chest, throat, mouth, nose, eye trouble, stomach, waist, legs, hands. Satan, I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. Come out. Hallelujah. Come out. Come out. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. 
I set you free. 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 In Jesus' name, you are free. Young boy, it's time for you to be healed. Go. It's time for you to be healed. Go. In Jesus' name, go. Remove your hand. Jump up. Give him glory. You are healed. Jump up. Amen. 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 What was wrong with you? It's open. Go. What you couldn't do before, go and do it. According to the power of God that worked in me and through me, you are free. Turn back to me. Walk back. Heal. Everybody give God a hand. Go. 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 I touch your head in Jesus' name. I touch your life with the healing power of God. Satan cannot stand it. He can't stand it. You are healed. Go free. In Jesus' name. Cancer of the bone. Satan, I lose your hand from this body. In Jesus' name, cancer of the bone, come out of her now. Today, she's healed. In Jesus' name. Let her go. Freely. Go. She's healed. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With thee also, says the Lord, I will break in pieces the shepherd and the flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke oxen. Thank you, Lord. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. Christianity is a destroying element against the power of darkness. The captain of the Lord of hosts will destroy the captains of infidels. The power of darkness, disease and pain, go in Jesus' name. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldean, all their evil that they have done in Zion, in your sight, says the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, the power that was destroying before, God is now going to destroy it. Did you hear me? I think you should give God a hand for this. Amen. Now, I want to make another call that I make once a year. How many want to become battle axe in God's hand? All of you want to become battle axe, come and climb here. Who want to be used by God to destroy darkness, sickness, disease, pain, aches, setback? Come here. Yes. Climb up. Climb up. If you're up, come down. Don't be where you were before. Just move from wherever you were. You want to become the Lord's battle axe? If you're at the back, move forward. If you're forward, climb up. As many 
as one to receive healing ministry. As many as want to receive power to heal the sick. Amen. You can climb to where the choir where all of you who are coming now. I am going to put power in your hands. Australia, the devil is in trouble. Amen. The devil is in trouble. Amen. Big army. A big army of men and women of faith have come out of this conference. Your money will no more be your money. It's going to be the lost money. Your time will no more be your time. It's going to be the lost time. Your day will no more be your days. It's going to be the lost day. For this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. If there's no room for you up, just line up here, all of you who are just coming. It's the same thing. I will pray here. I will pray here. Hey, Amen. This is a day in Australia. The dawning of a new day. The army of the Lord that will fight iniquity. The army of the Lord that will fight ungodliness. The army of the Lord that will fight unbelief. How many will become battle acts in God's name? Raise your two hands up. Father, according to your word, that lie not according to your word by which you created the world. I stretch my hand to you here. I point the word to you. Thus it is written. By the word he created the universe. By his word I proclaim the land of Australia power in your hands. These hands you raise shall become healing power. These hands you raise shall become the hands of deliverance. No evil shall stand you as a child of light. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. They had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told in the preach, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then, many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. I'm getting there. 
I met with the Archbishop my first time of meeting the Archbishop in the Hosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson the Hose University all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and I thank God it's particularly good for us whites British because in Britain uh, people are rather skeptical these days you'll not find many people who are really born again Christians um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the window, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idaosa. We said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. 
We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to believe. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold plated aircraft. Chief Ibunidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, Give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others feared to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it. In 1974-75, I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010, and just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, "Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world." Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone there 
previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. <laughs> Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that thing. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg, wait till I talk! Again! Again, again! Hey! Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why, why, he, why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. And 
one, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Early in the morning when I rise, Child, I will lift up be my healed. Eyes. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl's name? I say it's in one letter. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I die. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried to can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said she swam in there. He said he asked my father the question. He said, Daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life? My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living soul today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, In water, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in water, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Superpower. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that 
surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed. And he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy unspeakable joy in my spirit and the following day uh, we, we used to call him brother Benson he came I said where is the child he said the child is there and I called him to the room I said you know what I did last night I didn't know uh, I, I don't know how to do it but I just knelt by my bedside and I said God if you were the one that raised that child up let me have a part of that power he said ah you have done it and I knelt down we prayed and I and I said the, the sinner's prayer and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Delsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said, that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on the farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. 
His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Bata Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, Bens young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also President of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, President of Idaosa World Outreach, and President of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto Evangelism, our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries, all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada, Lisa, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. 
He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates his demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters, sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher. Uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. Idaosa also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other fate of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million 
Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined his, the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your altitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.